Good morning, my name is Michelle and today we're continuing with the book of Jonah and looking at what happens once Jonah is in the whale. But before Jonah was in the whale, he was about to be shipwrecked. So we're going to start with a game called Shipwreck. So in this game, you're all going to be given a different character that will come up on the screen. All of your characters are on a ship together, but then a storm hits and there are too many people on the boat. And it looks like you're going to be shipwrecked unless you throw two people out of the boat. You'll have five minutes to decide and agree on who you should sacrifice, taking into account things like their age, job, loved ones. But of course, you're going to want to fight to defend yourselves. So a list of characters are about to come up on the screen and then you can pause the video. The leader will give everyone a character and if there's not enough characters for everyone, feel free to make some up. You can also make some decisions about your character such as their age, marital status, kids, things like that. And once five minutes are up, you must take a vote and we'll see who gets sacrificed. Okay, so the characters are coming up on the screen now and if you want to pause the video, let's see what happens. Great. I hope that was interesting. Now, did it go the way you thought it would? So last week, Jonah found himself in a similar situation. Can you remember what happens in a story before he was swallowed by the whale? Take a moment to discuss and see how much you remember. Well done if you remembered it. So, to put it simply, God asked Jonah to go to the city of Nineveh and preach because they have gone into wicked ways. So what does Jonah do? He runs in the opposite direction. He ended up on a ship and there is a huge storm and each of the men on the ship ask who was responsible for the storm. It's then that Jonah says that he's run away from God and the other men realize that that is the cause of the storm. So Jonah insists that they throw him overboard as a sacrifice. This was when God sent a whale to swallow him up and he stayed there for three days and three nights. Now the first thing to remember is, God didn't send the whale as a punishment, but as a refuge to save him from a certain death in the stormy sea. Okay, now that we know how Jonah ended up in the whale, let's read what happens next. Great, now take a few minutes to discuss the following questions. What is Jonah's first reaction to the situation? Does Jonah appear to be sorry for disobeying God? And if he was sorry, was he sorry because he knew he'd done something wrong or because he wanted to be free from the consequences? I hope that was a helpful discussion time. Now the truth is, we all mess up just like Jonah. Because nobody's perfect, not even me. When I was about your age, there was a no chocolate in my bedroom rule at my house. And the punishment, if I disobeyed the rule, was that I would have to miss youth club that Friday night. Now, I loved chocolate, but I also really liked to push the boundaries. And even though I knew what the consequences were if I got caught, I couldn't resist and one time I bought home a big bar of dairy milk like this big from the local shops and I hid it down my trousers with my jumper over the top to cover it up as I walked home. I'd done it before so I was confident that I'd get away with it but 
Lo and behold, when I got home, I got caught talking to my mum before I had the chance to put the chocolate away and she soon noticed that I was hiding a giant bar of chocolate down my trousers. Now the consequences were that I missed youth club that Friday night and I was really upset and I was really sorry about what I'd done and very apologetic. But the truth, a bit like Jonah, I wasn't sorry about what I'd done. I was sorry that I got caught because I wanted to avoid the consequences. But I'd done the crime, so I deserved to do the time. I deserved the punishment. See, God's interested in our hearts. And when Jonah first got into the whale, he was so devastated by the consequences of his actions that he didn't stop and think about why running away from God was the wrong thing to do. He didn't stop and think about why God wanted him to go to Nineveh and how much of a difference and help he could make there. So if you take a look at the beginning of chapter two, Jonah has a big moan. He was too caught up with, life sucks, I was on a stormy ship and then I was thrown overboard and then a whale swallowed me up and now I'm inside the stomach of a whale which is super gross and life sucks and everything sucks. Poor me, God, where are you? Please help. And that's exactly why God kept him in the whale for three days. Because he needed some time to think about what he'd done, why he shouldn't have run away and disobeyed God, and why he was there. Only then would he come out of the whale with the right attitude and be willing to go to Nineveh like God asked. Not because he was afraid of the consequences, but because he wanted to, and because he knew it was the right thing to do to to obey God. So let's take a moment to reread Jonah chapter 2 verses 8 and 9 and discuss how are these verses different to the beginning of the chapter. See, it's not until verse 8 that Jonah's attitude actually changes. When he had nothing else, he'd completely hit rock bottom in the wet, in the belly of a whale. He realized how big and great God was. And then he was changed from the inside out. See, sometimes just like Jonah, we find ourselves in storms of life. Things can happen that are unexpected. And sometimes that might be a consequence of our own actions. And sometimes that can be something that wasn't our fault at all. I don't know if you've ever found yourself in a storm of life and cried out to God and felt like he's ignoring you or not listening. I know I have. But just like Jonah, sometimes it takes us being rock bottom when we've got nothing left but God to realise how much we need him. That's when our attitude can change. And often that's when we really see God move. Tim Mackey says the storms of life rescue us from ourselves because we are never more open to God's bigness than when we are most aware of our own smallness and helplessness. Storms mess with our agendas, suffering more than anything shapes us in the way of Jesus. So how can we respond to this? There are a few things we can do. So perhaps like Jonah, you've been running away from God either by not spending time with him or by something you've done that you know God wouldn't like. What's your heart? Are you truly sorry and ready to repent? Or maybe you're not quite there yet. Maybe you need to let God into that situation. Or perhaps you're finding yourself in a storm of life right now and you're crying out to God, but the storm just doesn't seem to be changing. Well, let's ask God to come into that situation as well. So, uh, in a moment we're going to break into smaller groups of three or four and share what you'd like to invite God into and spend some time praying for each other. But I want to encourage you that if you feel like God isn't responding even though you're crying out to him, just maybe sometimes he needs to keep you in the belly of the whale or in the storm a little bit longer just until you really need him or until he's finished doing the work he wants to do with you. Okay, so let's break into smaller groups of three and four and take some time to chat and pray with each other and respond to this.
Friend, I hope you found this session valuable. Uh, next week, we're continuing in the series in the book of Jonah. I hope you all have a wonderful week. God bless and see you next time.